My wife, Sugar Pie, is not what you would call a morning person. Any given morning, I could be greeted by anything from this to this. I only tell you that so you'll understand the kind of courage it takes to do this. She says she's getting up, but I don't see feet down there yet. Oh, she's able to punch the tarp. Good for her. I see feet. That's progress. It looked like I survived another morning wake-up call. Whew. Since we started adventuring together just a couple of years ago, we've been lucky to have woken up in some pretty spectacular places. And both of us will definitely remember H21 on Three Narrows Lake as another one of those. We're at H21 on Three Narrows Lake. One of the prettiest sights I think we've seen. We're pretty much packed up. Sugar Pie's got a couple more things to do and she's going to do some foot maintenance before we go. Because we have a lot of climbing to do today. Well this would be shorter than both of the first two days on the trail out of only 10 kilometers. We were now heading into Killarney's northern La Cloche mountain range where day two's 15 kilometer hike was relatively flat by Killarney standards. Day three was going to be significantly harder. We couldn't wait. Of course, no day on the trail can begin without one important ritual. Yeah, everybody's favorite part. The daily blister. <laughs> Want to show you your medical bag? Yeah. That's how we know it's important. <laughs> this is where we keep all Sugar Pie's first aid stuff right at the back of her pack in case, uh, in case she suddenly dies on the trail and I need to steal some band-aids. The painful part almost complete. Yeah. Yeah. All packed up. Going on our packs, we're gonna go have one last look at the lake from a little peninsula here on Three Narrows and then hit the trail. Where are we going today? We're going We were going to one of our favorite places from our 2022 Lacoste Silhouette Adventure, Chagog Lake. We spent two days and nights there last year, and after eventually learning to pronounce the name correctly, we were excited to be off to our favorite of the two campsites on that beautiful mountain lake, H32. It's all been easy up till now. Today we go up and we cruise across this ridge line that you see up here, all the way down to beyond where that last peak is over there. We heck of a day, off to Chicago Lake. Ready? Did, what do you think at age 21? The view was is spectacular. Yeah. And the water's nice and clear. Good access to it. Yeah. Um, lots of ants. <laughs> we have about a 20 minute walk probably till we get back to the trail. And then I don't think we waste a whole lot of time before the climbing starts. We made it back to the blues and we're off to where? We're off to to the ridge line and and the waterfall yeah and where's and camp at Chagog Lake thank you <laughs> cool let's go we're being swarmed by flies they're not biting but they're, they're swarming so we're gonna try and outrun them a little bit we got some climbing soon hopefully they're uh, not up on the ridge so we just finished a bit of a probably about a 10 minute gentle slope we get here sugar pie says what was it holy 
Holy cow. Holy cow. And then I hear some muttering under her breath. Yes, I can do it. So let's see her do it, folks. The first hike Sugar Pie and I ever did together was here in Killarney almost two years ago when we climbed to the highest point in the park, Silver Peak. Two weeks after that, for our first overnight backpacking adventure ever, I just want to show I got a new bag. We took on the toughest section of the Heaven's Gate Trail, just 20 kilometers or so west of where we were today, and a part of the same mountain range we are now reaching. Oh my god. Gosh. Well, this was going to be physically tough, sometimes technical, and all around difficult day for us. We knew exactly what we were getting into and genuinely loved doing this. A little sweat, pain, and exhaustion rarely dampened our enthusiasm for where we were and what we were doing. The payoff is the time spent together and that sense of accomplishment that only comes with doing things that challenge us. The views along the way are not bad either. The well, last time we came up here it was kind of cloudy and foggy. We had a view, we had a view but it was obscured and a little bit misty. Today not so much. How, what do you think? Wow. Yeah. Wow is my thoughts. So this is the first of our views today. We're gonna have several more. Yeah. And we made it to our first climb. So, you know, obviously we're here for the views, but you can come to a place like this. It's easy to maybe wanna complain about it being difficult or you being hot. And sweaty and it's hard work and it really is hard work but if you embrace it as a sport in itself it's pretty great you can't really play basketball for example and come across saying, well, I like shooting but running sucks you know it's just part of what what it is so it certainly comes with rewards and the rewards are these views in nights spending time in places where there are very few people and it takes a, a special kind of person to just even be able to get there because it's a lot of effort often especially along something like this trail go the low way if you want Oh, you got it. See? Piece of cake. The fear of hype for a little bit setting in, but it was okay. It was fun. Well, heights. We faced this section of trail on the third day of last year's adventure as well. While this time we had a beautiful clear day, for the time being at least, last year the weather was considerably different. But the view was breathtaking and a wonderful surprise. Here's possibly one of my favorite spots on this whole trail. And I remember it so fondly from last year because it was just amazing. The real bonus of having a dry and sunny day to enjoy is that it would make what was coming at least a little less treacherous than the first time we did it when we were facing wet and slippery rocks. Cameras and video never do justice to how steep some of these climbs are. After being treated to a great view of Three Narrows Lake, we now face possibly the most difficult descent on the trail and I can't imagine climbing it from the other direction is a lot of fun either. As far as crazy factor goes, this might be it for the trail. I think this is the uh, most technically difficult section. Um. Well, once as high as the Rocky Mountains out west, Killarney's Lacoste mountain range might be nothing in comparison to that now in size, but I don't think that necessarily makes this trail any less difficult than what you may face on a larger mountain. A section like this is as steep and challenging as you would want to face before considering additional climbing equipment no matter where it's located.
We still got a ways to go to the bottom yet. We got a little bit more of this and then a boulder field. But as far as the scary technical shit goes, I think that's it. If you hike this whole 78 kilometer loop, no matter which direction you go, excluding any trails in or out of campsites, you will climb and descend 2,404 meters or 7,887 feet. And not a lot of that feels gradual, with several sections being anything but simple. How's it going? It's going. I got down that part. Cool. We're going that way. But uh, you really want to be uh, careful down this part, that's for sure. Oh yeah. Hello. Hi. I'd say that went significantly quicker than it did last year. Really? Yeah. The dry helps. Yeah, uh, I would say. Not to, not to mention the experience. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. I enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to seeing how cold that water is down there that we're listening to. Me too. There's barely a puddle in front of you. For surviving the first of the treacherous descents on this trail, our reward, and I don't mean that as completely as sarcastically as it might sound, was another climb. This one we were looking forward to though. After all, how often do you get to climb a waterfall? Sugar Pie's back at her favorite feature of the entire trail. We get to climb a waterfall. I've been waiting for this. Yeah. While Sugar Pie may have a hard time remembering names and locations from a lot of the adventures we've done together, this was her favorite part of last year's entire hike, and she was really excited to be back. That'll cool you down. Hi. This is a bit that everybody seems to find extremely sketchy coming down from. Uh, going up, I don't get it. Maybe you see it differently when you just come down. It can be slippery, but this isn't technically super difficult. One thing we didn't do the first time we made this climb was to take a minute and check out the top of the waterfall. We felt this was the perfect time for some photos and a little snack break. We're taking a little bit of a break. What you got, sugar pie? I believe it's um, pineapple, mango, fruit roll-ups made with real fruit from home. Right. Dehydrated. Let's have a look. Nice. I'll take one. Okay. That one's yours. Thank you. Uh, have a taste. Let me know what it is. It might not be pineapple. It could just be straight mango. Oh, that's true. No, oh, it's pineapple mango, I would say. Well, that's what we had yesterday, so yummy. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> cool. Wow, this is 
is a really nice path right now. <laughs> well, we're completely in the shade. You may wonder, why is she wearing sunglasses? <laughs> well, of course there's to be expected a lot of bugs. But something that I'm not really, ta really taking is them going in my eyes. Right. The glasses, the sunglasses help. Well, the first climb of the day afforded us a wonderful view of Three Narrows Lake. This ascent brought us to one of the hidden gems on the trail, Moose Pass. Moose Pass is a narrow mountaintop notch with small narrow lakes connected by streams running up the middle. There are two campsites at Moose Pass, the one we would stop at here and one deep in a valley on a little stream further down the trail. Since we found the water at the falls to be the color of a light beer, we decided to stop at H22 here on this pretty little lake to refill our water bottles in case the stream below was dry or looked unappealing. We've wandered into H22. We're gonna get some fresh water, check out the view, and uh, enjoy. <laughs> that might be a bit of a tricky access. But, yeah, yeah. no. No one's here, so we're gonna take our packs off and rest for a little. A prettier day than this time last year. Sugar pie's making the descent. The start of the descent down to what? Down to Moose Pass, is it? What do we call it? Well, we call it Camp Butt Crack. There we go. We'll show you why when we get there. It's just great. If you ask people who've done this trail what part was the toughest physically, I bet Moose Pass would be near or at the top of everyone's list. From a clockwise direction, it starts with a steep 90 meter 295 foot descent over rocks and roots with enough dry leaves, pine needles and loose soil to help you slide all the way to the bottom should you decide actually surviving the hike isn't a great priority. That's why it takes a lot of time to cover ground in Killarney because at times you don't cover much ground quickly. And the general rule of what goes up must come down is also true in reverse here in Killarney. What goes down often must go back up so when we get to the bottom of this we got even bigger climb on the other side. Near the stream at the bottom of the valley we passed by H23, a site we stayed at on our third night last year and unaffectionately nicknamed Camp Buckrack. Not just for its location between two mountains, but for its quality as well. If you forced me to say something good about that experience, it would be that at least it gave us a place to set up and get out of the rain. And the water from Moose Creek was cold and clear. Coming down? Yeah. Okay, that's good because we got across. <laughs> Still having full waddles from H22, we got started on what was likely the most exhausting climb of the entire trip, as the Moose Pass experience have now moved on to the 154 meter, 505 foot, near unrelenting ascent to the top of the next ridge, where we hoped we would have a clear and amazing view of Three Narrows Lake below, assuming of course our legs didn't give out along the way. You know what hurts? What? I can hear this breeze, and it sounds like a hell of a breeze. I just can't feel any of it. It's like just over our heads kind of thing. That's a tease, so it's gonna feel nice when we get to the top. Last year we were forced to climb this on the morning of day four, straight out of Camp Butt Crack near the bottom of the valley below. Once our legs and muscles had gotten warmed up, it wasn't all that horrible. After being on trail for a couple hours and having done a couple climbs already today though, this felt like a climb that would never end. Still got up to go. They're still up to go. The trail might ease off briefly, giving you a false sense of hope that it was almost over. And then you make it to the top of one difficult section, only to find another one a few meters in front of you. Maybe the brain just has a way of forgetting pain, because this climb felt three times longer than I remembered it. If you've hiked any of Killarney shorter trails to capture one of the amazing views here, whether it's to the top of the crack trail or to the summit of Silver Peak, you'll have noticed that these trails get most difficult just before the top. The views are stunning and absolutely worth it, but there's no easy way to the top. So of course we were delighted to find that to be the case along almost this entire trail. Thankfully the rewards tend to scale with the suffering and this promised to be pretty spectacular.
This climb was brutal at this point in our day. When we made it to the top last year, early in the morning of day four, we found ourselves literally in the clouds, with no visibility at all below the ridge we had worked so hard to summit. I was told we missed one hell of a view. That wasn't going to be a problem this time. Was it worth the pain? Oh yeah. Green arrows down below. What do you think? Wow, it is breathtaking. Yeah. Clarny, weather changes fast. What was hot and sunny a minute ago is now overcast and very windy and ominous. So we put in our rain covers on our packs and we're hitting the trail. Which is this way. Yeah. Great view though. Still enjoying it. And it doesn't look as dark beyond what initially was coming, but just to be safe. There we go, an even clearer view. From the top we can see the entire valley between two of the Lacloche Mountain ridgelines, from Silver Peak in the east to Three Narrows Lake below, and on a clear day as far as Lake Huron's north channel to the west. Another one of those views that we just missed last year because of the mist and stuff. Even then you knew you were high up, you just really had no idea. It was really great to see everything we missed the first time here, and one of the reasons we wanted to do this again. Everyone who has been around this loop has hiked roughly the same distance as everyone else, climbed the same ridges, crossed the same streams. Depending on when the hike was completed, the time of year, and the day-to-day -day weather, we all got our own unique experiences out here. And we found both of ours to be unique in their own way. As we made our way past views that had been lost in the clouds a year before, we were reminded why we do this, why we were back, and why we will likely do it again one day. After our shortest yet most difficult hike of the adventure so far, we finally made our way back down to the mountain valley where our third night's camp on Chicago Lake awaited. Hi. Hi. H31, H32. Sick of these mosquitoes, so I don't want to hang out too long. Oh my god. Yeah. Progress. Welcome to Chicago Lake. We didn't show you when we got here. We've been here for maybe a couple hours now, huh? Yeah. Yeah. We got our hammock set up. Um, we're kind of just exhausted when we got here. We originally intended to take a nap, right? Yeah, but th but we kind of found out that we were more awake than we thought. <laughs> yeah, and you and you mostly got distracted by what? By my feet. Yeah. <laughs> her, her feet are having a rough trip so far. Yeah, uh, lots of blisters, but yeah, comes well, with the territory. I'll spare you the close-ups. So, right now we're just making dinner. Um, we're actually having, um, it's supposed to be, uh, it's actually supposed to be pasta with pasta sauce and um, fr fresh mushrooms that we dehydrated. Um, but right now we're just keeping it sealed, seeing if it will rehydrate. And if not, we're gonna dehydrate it in the pot. So what's in the pot? Just water right now. Oh, okay. Hey, how come that one looks funny? <laughs> because it has actually white chocolate um, weed in it. Cool. 